Hello everybody, welcome to today's episode of House of Talisha with me, Isabel Talisha Soares. Below and behind me, the magnificent, monumental city of Córdoba in Andalusia in the south of Spain. Córdoba is a UNESCO World Site in the historical district. It is a majestic city where different cultures meet, where different cultures and religions have been together for thousands of years and building layer upon layer of history. Once Cordoba was the biggest, largest town in Europe, rivaling London, Paris and Rome, and it was actually bigger than them. That is, or that was in the 11th century, at the times of the Emirate of Cordoba. But there was also a caliphate near Cordoba that we will also be visiting. Let me just explain that an emir is a ruler who has military and political power and the caliph is a ruler who has military power, political power and also religious power. And all of that can be seen here in Cordoba whose historic district, the core of the city, is in its entirety a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So follow us to Córdoba. One of the iconic landmarks here in Córdoba is the Alcazar de los Reyes Cristianos, the Alcazar of the Christian monarchs. The Alcazar was used by Isabella and Ferdinand, the Christian monarchs, during the siege of Granada. They moved the palace, the, the, the headquarters of the monarchy from Toledo to here in Cordoba to be nearer Granada, which was, of course, a Muslim place and they wanted to reconquer it back to Christendom. And so Toledo was far from here. They took quarters here in the Alcazar. The Alcazar is built upon Roman buildings, a layer upon layer of occupation here. And also very interesting about the Alcazar, when you visit, you will find the statues of Ferdinand and Isabella together with Christopher Columbus. Because here is where Christopher Columbus sold the idea of the monarch sponsoring his voyage to the Americas. Of course, he didn't intend to go to the Americas. He planned to go to India. The Americas was just on the way. And also inside the building, you have the Arab baths from the Muslim presence prior to the Christian occupation. The Alcazar and Cordoba were taken from the Moors by Ferdinand III, called the Saint, in 1236. So if you see, there is this cauldron of history and opportunity of civilizations meeting in one given place. If you're local and uh, you want uh, to get married, you can go to the city hall, ask for using the castle for free, and you can get married inside. But, uh, do you know, Cordoba and Seville, we're rivals. <laughs> we're rivals, and uh, they won the battle. Because finally, they, they shoot in, in the Alcazar in Seville. Anyway, in the past season, you can see the Roman bridge here in Cordoba. The name it has uh, Blackwater. Oh, okay. Blackwater River. I have never seen the two here, so I don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know what you're missing, man. <laughs> <laughs> really. Kings, Isabella, Ferdinand, and in front of the Christopher Columbus. This culture is completely new. <laughs> It's just amazing. We only found this column in the in the 50s when they opened this uh, this gate. They made them uh, the, the gates uh, bigger, oh, and they found the column by accident. Oh, 
The mosque at Cordoba is the city's most iconic monument. It is a cathedral and a mosque all at once. It was originally a mosque and it is overwhelming. It has around 1,000 columns and inside there is the cathedral of the Christian monarchs. So you will find an extraordinary mix like nowhere else between an Islamic religious building and a Christian religious building, in this case a Catholic cathedral. Beware of the crowds, beware of pickpockets, beware of always being with your nose up in the air, watching the monument and not minding your step. There are irrigation channels everywhere, so mind your steps and then be overwhelmed. It doesn't get any more iconic than this, the mosque of Cordoba with its famous columns and arches. It is actually one mosque that was expanded four times and built over Roman buildings, over Christian buildings, then the Muslim mosque and finally a Christian cathedral after Cordoba was reconquest in the Middle Ages. This is actually very overwhelming and emotional because you come here and you recognize the building from the documentaries and all the history books. So absolutely fabulous and truly amazing. Just outside the mosque of Cordoba, you have the Roman bridge, which was used 
by cars and buses and all vehicles up until 1980 something, 86 I believe. This Roman bridge is famous for having 16 arches over the Guadalquivir River. The Guadalquivir is the fifth uh, longest river in the Iberian Peninsula and it crosses cities such as Seville and here Cordoba. At the end of the bridge you've got the Calahorra Tower which was built to protect the bridge which was the for ages and ages the only single way to have access to uh, Cordoba or from Cordoba to the south of Spain. You probably recognize this bridge as Blackwater if you are into Game of Thrones. All the city centre, the historical district of Cordoba is UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's not just a mosque, it's not just a Roman bridge, it's not just the towers, the synagogue, it's not just the Jewish quarter, everything. And actually the historic district of Cordoba is one of the largest UNESCO sites. Finally, they discovered something that knew, we knew before. The original Sydney book was bigger than the one we can see nowadays. So behind this wall we have on my left hand, we have the Nibbah, yeah, the ritual bath for females that come inside to, to the Roman Christian book. And they found also the school. <coughs> in, two, in two years probably, you will see it's, uh, the two buildings. And, uh, other to this, uh, so, do you know how many Synagogues you can preserve in Spain from the old times? Mm. One? No, uh, a little bit more. And especially uh, since two months ago. Because uh, if, you ask, if you ask by him, you can, you can see the place where they kept uh, the Torah. We are in the Jewish quarter of Cordoba. Cordoba, which is known and proudly so for being the city of the three cultures where they lived for centuries together. The Jewish culture, the Christian culture and the Muslim culture. The Jewish community at its height was 5% of the population. Nowadays, 11 families make up the Jewish community here in Cordoba. And we are near the statue of Maimonides. Maimonides was a theologian, a philosopher, a physician of the Middle Ages. He was born here in Cordoba in 1135 and he died in Cairo as a physician of the Sultan in Cairo. We are here next to the statue of Maimonides as a symbol of peace amongst religions and cultures. And what better way to finish our episode today than here in the Jewish quarter of Cordoba. Just letting you know that the community, the Jewish community here is Sephardic. Sephardic Jews are the Jews of Spain and Portugal, the Iberian Jews. Some tips to organize your trip to Cordoba in case you want to come. 
Well, Cordoba is really hot in the summer months. This is late December and we have incredibly mild weather. Plan ahead and it's very worth if you book a guided tour of the city. There's plenty to see, there's plenty to walk, but if you have a good guide, you will have so much more information. As for me, I'm Isabel Talisha Swaj of House of Talisha. You know where to find me. We have always something new for you in each episode. Subscribe the channel, leave comments, suggestions. I'll see you next time here at House of Talisha. I will be waiting for you. All over Andalusia you will find beautiful orange trees. Orange trees, if you know your Attenborough documentaries, are not native to Europe and the Mediterranean. They are native to China, so they were imported from China early on. But the orange trees that you see all over Andalusia in cities like Seville, here in Cordoba, in Granada, they are not sweet oranges, they are bitter oranges. And what is that bitter orange? Well, this is a leaf of an orange tree. And you know if it is a bitter orange tree, if it has a double leaf like that. And you use bitter oranges to do marmalade. So that's it. These oranges are used here mostly for decorative purposes and because when they are in bloom they release a wonderful scent a wonderful perfume otherwise they will be exported to britain for marmalade so next time you delight in toast with marmalade remember the bitter oranges which are actually called seville oranges Eight kilometers far from Cordoba is Medina Alzara. Medina Alzara, meaning the brilliant city, the shining city, is an archaeological complex on a hill overlooking Cordoba. It was built in the 10th century in, 19, in 940 by the, the Caliph Abdul Rahman III. Other theories also say that the city was built to pay tribute to the wife or the lover. I've read both versions of the Caliph. She was called Zara. And um, Al Medina Al Zara was the capital of the Caliphate of the Omeyyad of the West. And curiously, it was a very short lived capital. 75 years after it was built, struggles for power and then the Christian reconquest left the city in ruins and today only 10% of it has been excavated. And the part that we can actually visit, which is the Alcazar of the Caliph, is very worth the visit and it is amazing in showing how life was back then and how Islamic architecture was. This is the official parts of the palace. This is for administrative purposes and it was designed to show the power of the caliph to impress visitors and diplomats that came to the city. Behind me is what seems to be an oven. We don't know because there are no signs indicating what it is. There are some signs at the beginning, at the entrance of this uh, complex. But 
on the whole this city these remnants these ruins remind us a little bit of Pompeii and talking about Pompeii we talk about the Romans and part of the water supply that got to the city to the Medina Alzada was through an aqueduct a Roman aqueduct which was rebuilt to bring water to the city so layer upon layer of occupation and again the Romans We have just finished our visit to the Medina Al Zara. And to help you prepare for your own visit, some tips. But before I give you those tips, behind me you've got four olive trees that were planted in the 13th century and they are a living testimony of the history of Cordoba. The Medina is midway up the slopes further there. That is the Medina or the ruins of the Medina. And now the tips to help you prepare. Well, the Medina is accessible by a bus and when you come to the visitor center they will give you free tickets that allow you to visit the museum which is here down the hill on the slopes of the hill and then to get you to entry to, to get you entrance to the Medina itself to the archaeological site the only thing you need to purchase is a return ticket so that the bus will take you there because the Medina is not available by car. You can hike, it's two and a half kilometers far from here, the interpretation center, and the return tickets just cost you two and a half euros, so perfectly worth it. And remember that Cordoba will be very hot in the summer. And this is it for the Medina. There's plenty more to see in Cordoba, but this Medina is outside as I told you before. Enjoy your trip!